Hi guys, welcome to a quick catch up. I'm uploading some absolutely fabulous songs, really, really cool songs. And um, they're called the Wil Wilderness Songs. They're all different. Um, I know that sounds weird, but sometimes on LibriVox you get the same poem, but read by lots of different people. I tend not to put those up. Um, so just for your convenience, really, I mean, they're public domain um, items, so you can go and get them yourselves. But I, I just like to put them all in one place. And, um, you know, it's it's quite cool to inspire musicians to use stuff that's already written. I, I listen to these and I just think, oh, that would sound so good set to music. So good. Um, so, you know, at some point I'm going to be doing some of my own from this particular book. I love them. Um, Conkling, the author. Uh, I don't know anything about the author. I'm going to go and do a little blog post about who they are. I think it was a woman. Um, I'm not sure. Um, so, yeah, really cool. Just beautiful. There's some war poetry. There's some um, ro a bit of romance and uh, nature, words about nature, things like that. Really good for folk music. And as you know, I'm really quite into this electronic folk music vibe that I've got going on at the moment. I really like it. I really, it just works so well with film and animation. The The wonderful thing about folk music is it, it's usually quite simple in terms of um, sort of uh, rhythm and complexity of key and stuff like that, which means it's not too, too distracting from the visual because you don't want anything that's really heavy... Or, or really, you know, takes over. So I really like that about old poetry and folk music and that whole folk genre. But there's some other things about folk that I really like. I think the the way that it moves with the narrative, you know, folk music is, you know, it has kind of chapters, a lot of it. You know, some some folk stuff, go, you know, got like 10 verses. Um, I mean, I've looked at hymns as well, but they're all a bit godly, if you know what I mean. But, the, you know, I have done some cover versions anyway. Um, and I've also sampled, because what you can do with these recordings, you can actually sample the actual recording. So this, it, everything about it is in the public domain. The lyrics, the construction, the actual recording itself. So you can take it, put it in that recording, you know, the file, directly into your... Logic Pro or your Ableton or... Is it Ableton? Is that the other one? Audacity, that was the one I was thinking of. Um, and you can, you know, fiddle around and pitch shift and you can do all sorts of things. You can put them through your Evoc 20. That's a really interesting thing if you want to be a bit experimental about it. Um, the other thing you can do, you can note down the words and then you can change them to fit your mood. You could change... Um, gender, you know, you could write it as if it's from a man to a woman, you could put names in it. So there's no rule about not being allowed to change it. You can change whatever you want. So if you're really, if you've got a bit of writer's block and you need some inspiration, you can listen to a few of these and I promise you'll be inspired either to write your own off the back of them or to use them and maybe just tweak them a bit, you know. So, um, I mean, lots of... Uh, Simon and Garfunkel did that, didn't they, with, um, I've forgotten, uh, Rosemary and Time, isn't it? Rosemary. Rosemary wrote that one. I think that's a very old one, old folk song. Um, I think there was Scarborough Fair. That was it, wasn't it? Scarborough Fair, I think. That was the one that they... was a was a folk song. But anyway, there's... You know, there's lots of examples, but I just don't know any of them. I can't draw, you know, they're not springing to mind at the moment. So the other thing um, about uh, today that's so exciting, I just live streamed the musical for four hours on my phone. Now, it was a bit glitchy and a bit buffery. Which I just know that's not a real word, but I really like it. I've been saying it to myself all morning. It's being buffery. I just love that word. Um, there's no such word. Well, there is now because I've just used it. But um, you, it's had quite a bit of lag on it. I put it next to my router so that it didn't have too far to travel. But I've just ordered from Amazon an adapter that you can put your phone... You put it into your phone. I've got a C 
socket, whatever that's called, you know, and that works for my Mac as well and my phone. Um, and it works across my devices. But I've got one that you can put your Ethernet in and you can also put the charger in because there's no point in... That's what happened this morning. I ran out of battery. Um, so I need to, you know, you need to charge it. Now, the, the weird thing is that I was recording my screen, so I was playing it off YouTube, but I thought, well, if, my, if somebody messages me um, on my WhatsApp and it comes up, I mean, you you would hope it wouldn't be anything that you weren't having an argument. It's much more likely to be my mum saying you've got a parcel. <laughs> it's very boring. But um, so I suppose, you know, there could be a, a bit of a security thing. And then when I tried to log on again, it was still recording my screen. But I it was asking me to put my um, my number in, you know, my PIN. And I thought, oh, I can't do that because the whole of the internet is going to see it. So there's just a couple of security issues that you, you should be aware of if you're if you're doing your screen. Um, I think there's a lock screen facility as well. But presumably, if you run out of battery at some point, you're going to have to re, you know, ignite your phone. And you, if the screen's locked, how are you going to do that? You know, you need all your buttons. So... I'm going to have a little think about that. Maybe get myself another phone, perhaps. Um, I mean, it's annoying because I've got an iPad, but it's just a data iPad, so I can't get incoming messages. So that doesn't work for things like codes, you know, when when PayPal sends you a code or Amazon. Um, so it might be time for me to get another phone so that I can keep one private and one just for streaming. So that's the next thing I'm going to have a little look at. Funny enough, my mum's got a Nokia. Um, she's got three Nokias and she's going to put them up for sale and I, I'd really like one. Um, I wouldn't be able to stream from it because it's not a, not a smartphone, but I'd get messages. So that that would solve that problem, um, you know, for, my, for all my, my security stuff. Um, but, you know, there's lots of different things I need to pay for and I do it all on my phone. I've got all these apps, you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's a bit tricky. You have to kind of f work out because we we have so much data and so much um, so so much of our sort of working lives are done through these little apps now, you know. Um, oh, my credit card, you know, all of that stuff. It's all done on an app. And you want that completely separate from your streaming um, you know, whatever it is you're using to stream, you want you want to keep everything separate. So that's what I'm going to look into to today. See if I can get an old phone. As long as it's got a C port, that's all I need. Um, so yeah, what a fantastic day! Lots of fantastic stuff. It uh, it it was great. I watched a bit of it. Um, it's going to be even better when there are ten episodes or twenty episodes. So in a couple of months, it's going to be really juicy, and I'm just going to run it all the time and build up, you know, an audience um, for the musical. So I'm really excited. Okay, guys, I better go and do some work. Au revoir.